the Cubs offense shows up once again in a big way at Wrigley Field to start their second to last homestand of the season. Shota Minaga's excellent rookie season continues with a career high 11 strikeouts. That and more on this edition of the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Get in that comment section. Keep riding with us as we try to will this team into a strong finish of the season. But for now, here is your invitation to our show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. My name is Anthony Pasquale, and you can find me here on Twitter at Ant underscore Pasquale3. You can also find our Cubs Baseball Channel on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok. So make sure to follow us on those platforms as we try to pass out some different Cubs content on those other channels. So follow us on here, of course, and stay tuned with us on YouTube. we got some big things coming as well as on those other platforms. But the Cubs open up their penultimate homestand of the season with a 9-2 to victory over the Oakland Athletics, who are only in Oakland for the rest of this season. Uh, the Cubs improved to 77-73 and on the year with this 9-2 to win. 18 hits in the game. We'll get into the offense in just a little bit, but man, Shota Imanaga, excellent once again. Sets his career high on the season with 11 strikeouts in a six-inning two-run effort. For him to only strike out or to strike out a total of 11 batters in only six innings, only seven other outs were recorded. This guy is the real deal. He's been phenomenal for the Cubs all season long, improving his season record to 14 and three with a 3.03 ERA, 170 strikeouts, and 166 in a third innings pitched, just a whip of 1.03. This guy has been everything advertised and more. It looks like the Cubs got a bargain with this contract and you got to give, you know, we've given Jed Hoyer a lot of criticism for a lot of his moves that weren't great. Um, and, and moves that we wish he would have made to make this team better, but you got to give him credit where it's due. Show to Imanaga was a fantastic signing. And if it wasn't for Paul Skeens in Pittsburgh, he would be a really good candidate to win rookie of the year this season in the national league. And, and probably we'll get some Cy Young, maybe even an MVP vote or two when it's all said and done this season. Um, also, kudos to Jed Hoyer for acquiring Michael Bush from the Dodgers. He was just named the NL Player of the Week. Um, he was 0 for 4 yesterday, but coming off a two two homer game to close out that series in Colorado to earn NL Player of the Week honors, the Cubs' first such honor since Say Suzuki back in 2022. So, some credit to Jed there. Um, Shota Minaga and Michael Bush have been slam dunk acquisitions this season. The Cubs offense exploded for 18 hits in the ball game. The big blow coming in the second inning, a three-run home run from Dansby Swanson, his 15th of the year. He drove in four runs. Miguel Amaya drove in a pair of runs, and so did Isak Paredes. Ian Happ also knocked in a run himself. Swanson, Bellinger, Horner, Pekar Armstrong all tallied two hits, and then Miguel Amaya, Isak Paredes, and Seiya Suzuki all had three hits. They combined for nine runs on 18 hits, a really strong showing by the offense that for the last month and a half has been a really good offense in MLB, um, which of course is helping the Cubs season record numbers in terms of rankings and you know batting average, on-base percentage, run scored, those sorts of things. It's helping the Cubs run differential as well, but at the very least, you know, they're playing better baseball as of late. On the season, a run differential of plus 66. A month ago, I think they're below zero. And um, as it stands right now, the Cubs have a better run differential than the Mets, who they're chasing in the wild card and are only two runs off from the Braves. So it, it's a showing of a team that probably should be looking at playing postseason baseball. Their expected win-loss on the season is 82-68. and 68. Uh, they're currently 77 and 73. You know what 82 and 68 would be? Tied for that third wild card spot. So this team obviously has the tools. They're close enough, but not close enough where you want to roll this team back out there next year. Some changes need to be made, and I'm still curious to see what those end up being. But as it stands right now, the Cubs are in second place in the NL Central, five games back of the Mets in the NL wild card. They're chasing just four from the Atlanta Braves, who lost yesterday to the Dodgers nine to nothing, but 
Still not looking good. Just a 0.2% chance to make the playoffs this season, even though the Cubs are four games over 500. But they do get another crack at the Athletics tonight at Wrigley Field. 640 is the start time. Um, I'll be there. One of my, I think, I'm assuming last games of the season. I'm excited to get back out to Wrigley um, and get to see this guy pitch, who I haven't seen throw yet in person this year, Jordan Wicks. On the mound for the Cubs, two and three on the year with a 5.27 ERA. Had a little bit of tough time early in the season, getting deep into ball games. Battled a couple of injuries, came back recently, but he's still kind of having those issues. I will say, from last year to this year, the big difference with Jordan Wicks is he's missing bats a lot better. Um, his first few starts on the year, he had uh, six strikeouts, six strikeouts, seven strikeouts, six strikeouts, and five strikeouts, and then four before he was injured at the end of April. Then he came back out of the bullpen um, a little bit in June, then started one more game June 14th and was out again until September 1st. Now he's made three straight starts. He's gone five innings, five innings, and three innings. That last start um, against the Dodgers wasn't pretty, giving up seven runs and four homers. So hopefully he can get back on track a little bit against the A's and Mitch Spence, who is seven and nine on the year with a 4.33 ERA. Um, and the Cubs have not announced their starter for tomorrow's series finale at 120 at Wrigley Field. Guys, thanks so much for joining us to talk some Cubs baseball. Hopefully the Cubs can keep it rolling against the A's and win their third in a row, but keep following and subscribing, liking, um, getting in our comments section, uh, finding us on those other channels, Twitter, TikTok, and uh, Instagram. But for now, thank you guys for coming here to the Cubs baseball channel, talk some Cubs, and hopefully we are talking to you guys tomorrow after the Cubs' third straight victory. Go Cubs.